All right, San Antonio, thank you for staying with us. Meet one of San Antonio Zoo's newest members of the year, the very cute white-cheeked gibbon. The new arrival can be found in the Asian forest area at the zoo. And according to zoo officials, these white-cheeked gibbons are critically endangered due to habitat loss. They spend most of their life in the trees and can travel up to 35 miles an hour, swinging up to 50 feet in a leap. Oh. So to learn more about how to plan your next trip to see these cute little guys, you can just head over to the website. So it's a monkey? It's it's something. It said they were swinging in the trees. Yeah, no, it's, it's Okay, it's our, our producer says it's a type of monkey. Okay, yeah. I was like, yeah. what is Definitely that? Definitely a mammal. Okay, well, I love the San Antonio Zoo. I'm gonna go check out no, the new gibbon. It's a great zoo. All right, folks, time is 858, 67 degrees. We'll be right back. Right on GMSA, Republican Kevin McCarthy is saying 15, the 15th time is the charm after finally being elected as Speaker of the House, how it all went down last night on Capitol Hill. Plus, is improving your health one of your New Year's resolutions? It can be easier said than done. Arlissa Cole shares some ways to survive dry January. That's in just a few moments. And taking a look outside through live cam, it's 901, 66 degrees. Folks, it's a little foggy, so make sure you're driving safely if you're going to be hitting the roads later this morning. Good morning. It is 9 o'clock this Saturday, January 7th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. That's right. And speaking about the fog, we got to check in with our meteorologist, Mia Montgomery, to see how the weather conditions are going to be holding up this weekend, especially if you have any plans on being outdoors? Yeah, absolutely. Today, plan for it to be pretty muggy and humid out there. We've got some pockets of drizzle already developing across portions of South Central Texas. That's going to lead in some spotty showers this afternoon. And then a storm chance for some, not all of us, moves in this evening. But really tonight is our next cool front pushes through South Central Texas. Good news with that cool front, though. Tomorrow's outlook looking pretty good thanks to some lower humidity that's going to filter into the area as well. Taking a look at dew points, how we measure that moisture here at the surface. You can see those dew points are in the 60s, a bit higher than where we were this time yesterday and very much in that muggy category, which essentially just means you're going to be able to feel that stickiness today when you do step outside, maybe clutching the can of hairspray a little bit tighter than we were over the past few days. Because of that humidity in place, we still do have some areas of fog out there this morning morning, some of which in localized spots are pretty dense, reducing visibility. That is the case along I-10 just to the northwest of Bear County, really near the Bernie stage area. Bernie stretching up to Kerrville, not as bad, but still visibility has been lowered. New Braunfels, the same stretching up to San Marcos up I-35 and even across portions of Highway 90 west of San Antonio near places like Uvalde. So just as Jonathan mentioned earlier, definitely need to make sure that we are careful out there on area roadways this morning. Some drizzle possible leading ways to those spotty showers this afternoon. Highs headed for the low 70s. We'll talk about that storm chance tonight and what all that will mean for the second half of the weekend and into next week in just a bit, guys. Yeah, and you this morning after the holidays, many American adults consider cutting back on alcohol for dry January. So we covered it, covered it a little earlier on GMSA at 630. And now Alyssa Cole joins us live with the potential health benefits of skipping that glass of wine or <laughs> beer or whatever you choose. Alyssa. You know, you know, mojitos. That's you know, classic. margaritas. <laughs> Absolutely. Now I want to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Good morning. So for those who don't know, Dry January is a popular 31 day commitment for losing weight, detoxing or just simply improving health habits. Now, studies show a month long fast from alcohol can improve sleep, reduce cholesterol, lower blood pressure, aid in weight loss, and it can reduce liver fat by a whopping 40 percent. Data from AARP shows 74% of American adults who committed to a dry January succeeded in their goal and maintained sobriety after January. And in a different study, people found that after a month off from drinking, 67% reported having more energy and 58% even lost weight. So where do you start? 
If you're thinking about giving up alcohol, first write down your goal and post it somewhere that you'll see every day. You might want to enlist a buddy to join in on your efforts and next get rid of all the alcohol in your house so there's no temptation and find alternatives to alcohol. Mocktails, now that's a popular choice, especially if you're in a social setting or bar. There are mocktails or cocktail style beverages made without alcohol. You might also want to try non-alcoholic beers and wines. A cava drink is another popular substitute for alcohol. Kava is a plant that can be brewed into a calming tea or other type of beverage, or you can try kombucha. That's one of my favorites as well. It's a fermented tea as well. Now remember, you don't want to give up if you have a slip up. Just keep doing your best. Researchers suggest teaming up with a friend or group to keep accountability and avoiding situations where you might be tempted to drink. Jonathan, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alyssa. Now to your morning headlines. It's time to get down to business for the U.S. Congress now that a Speaker of the House has been elected. In a late night ballot that was decided by four votes, Kevin McCarthy takes the win over New York Representative Hakeem Jeffries. Rachel Scott has the latest from Capitol Hill. After four days of voting, a new Speaker of the House has finally been chosen. The Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the state of California having received a majority of the votes cast, is duly elected Speaker of the House of Representatives. Republican Kevin McCarthy securing the Speaker's gavel after more than a dozen defeats this week. That was easy, huh? In America, dreams can still come true. But that was after tensions appearing to rise on the House floor between Republicans after McCarthy lost the 14th round of voting. My friends, this chamber is now fully open for all Americans to visit. The congressman from California picking up support from fellow Republicans on Friday, prompting cheers on the House floor during what's now the longest vote to elect a speaker since before the Civil War. McCarthy received 216 votes over Democratic Representative Hakeem Jeffries' 212 votes. The D in Democrat stands for deliver. Over the next two years, as we begin, this 118th Congress. Let us continue to fight. 20 Republicans had been holding firm against McCarthy, but that changed after a series of closed door negotiations and concessions. Now that this battle for the speaker is over, the members can finally be sworn in and move on to their legislative duties. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. In some other quick headlines, a Virginia teacher is fighting for her life in the hospital after being shot by a six-year-old student. Newport police say the six-year-old child brought a handgun to a first-grade class and deliberately shot the teacher. The school locked down and officers swarmed in trying to calm terrified students and bewildered parents. The six-year-old is in custody. No one else was injured and the child was arrested within minutes. Unfortunate situation, folks. Time is 908, temperature is 66 degrees. Still to come, a small town in Wisconsin is celebrating a huge lottery win. Why their name might have something to do with it. And after the break, a big birthday is coming up for the U.S. Army. But Joint Base San Antonio's Fort Sam Houston is celebrating a little early, and we'll tell you why coming up next. Is that your story, Jonathan? That is my story. I knew it was. <laughs> Look at that fog out there. Mia Montgomery has been talking about the fog all morning. She'll tell us when it's expected to clear up and when this humidity is also expected to kind of push out when we come back. This morning, a badge of honor for San Antonio is the military history we have here in this city. I went to JBSA Fort Sam Houston, which is celebrating 80 years and looking back at their major accomplishments. You know, we've got a, a big birthday coming up for Fifth Army. I mean, we're Army North, but we take our lineage from uh, United States Fifth Army or Fifth United States Army, as it were. U.S. Army North celebrating 80 years at Joint Base San Antonio Fort Sam Houston. A place with lots of history. We were the first United States forces to conduct an assault on the European mainland in World War II. The birthday celebration hosted in Fort Sam Houston's historic quadrangle, featuring its own 323rd Army Band, demonstrations, a mass oath enlistment, 
and a Mexican air fighter squadron. Mexico made significant contributions during World War II. Mexico's 201st Air Fighter Squadron, the Aztec Eagles, served in the Pacific Theater during World War II, conducting 795 combat missions and logging almost 2,000 hours of flying time. Evans says they feel blessed to have the support of civic leaders, businessmen, women, and veterans throughout San Antonio. He adds they empower and make them who they are each and every day. Whether it's contributions during World War II or its response to the COVID-19 pandemic, U.S. Army North says its mission will always place defending the homeland as its top priority. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. 80 years, Jonathan. 80 years. Really impressive. You know, one of the really cool things about it is uh, before the Air Force was formed, the Army was really, you know, taking over air operations. And it's really cool to find out that San Antonio, you know, those first flights in World War II were mm -hmm. right here out of San Antonio. So lots of history. Military City USA. That's Thank right. you so much for all your military coverage, Jonathan. Yeah, they've been, been really good pleasure. stories. My pleasure. Really Thank you, Mia. Stories. All right. So today, maybe some folks are waking up. Itchy eyes, a little bit of a, a sniffle. Yeah. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. This guy I'm typically like, <laughs> affected by mountain cedar. And if you are, wouldn't be surprised if you're seeing that today. Got our pollen count in. Mountain cedar has climbed very high levels this Saturday. Molds have also climbed a little bit compared to where they were yesterday, now in the moderate category. So that's what we're looking at here. Kicking off the weekend in terms of our pollen count. Today, the big story is going to be the humidity. The cloud cover has returned. We have some areas of fog out there this morning, as well as some drizzle. All of that still possible over the next couple of hours. Some light showers for some, not all in the works into the afternoon. Pretty spotty in nature. And then as we head into this evening and even more so tonight, as our next cool front approaches from the north, scattered rain, a couple of thunderstorms look to be in the forecast for us here in south central Texas. Texas. After that boundary pushes through, though, lower humidity filters into the area for the back half of the weekend, making it feel just a little bit more comfortable outside and those temperatures slightly cooler tomorrow afternoon compared to what we're expected to find out there today. So starting off with a look out live cam, maybe not as bad as where we were about an hour ago, but still we do have that cloud cover here this morning. Temperatures in the 60s because of the fog, because of the drizzle and and those clouds. We haven't seen a big fluctuation in temperatures so far over the past several hours. 66 officially over at San Antonio International, a dew point of 64. So when those numbers are close together, the air starts to saturate, and that's why we start to see some of that fog develop. 65 in Bolverde this hour at 63 up in Canyon Lake in Comal County, 66 in Hondo, 69 on the south side of Bear County at Stinson, 63 in Comfort stretching over to Kerrville up in the Hill country. The drizzle in the mist hasn't been for everybody, but we have seen some of that shown up here on the radar. You can see across our southeastern counties near Rungi, stretching over to Yorktown. Some of that drizzle continues to filter off to the north. Hallettsville out there in Lavaca County seeing some mist. Gonzales as well, a few sprinkles out your way. That activity continues north of San Antonio as well, and even to the northern portions of Bear County. A few sprinkles out there this morning. That will be the theme over the next couple of hours into this afternoon. A few peaks of sunshine certainly possible. We'll see a few spotty showers out there and then by to just after dinner time, eyes will be on that boundary moving in some scattered rain, a couple of thunderstorms in the works. And while we're not overly expecting severe weather again, especially across our southern and southeastern counties, we will need to monitor for an isolated stronger storm. The exception rather than the rule that activity continues to push to the southeast through the pre dawn hours of our Sunday, maybe a stray lingering shower across the coastal plains after sunrise tomorrow, but then yes, it's going to feel a whole lot more comfortable out there for the back half of the weekend. Temperatures in the upper 60s that continues into Monday with another isolated chance for a stray shower, more sunshine on Tuesday, and then temperatures warm, warmer than average in the mid 70s. I'm enjoying this warmer weather, but it doesn't mean that there's not a chance for it to get cold again later in the month of January. Exactly. And February. We'll still monitor kind of the cold fronts moving in over the next couple of months, at least this week. While it is going to be warmer than average, especially tomorrow, that lower humidity is just going to make it feel a whole lot better than today. Oh, yeah. Thank but you, yeah. Mia. Mm -hmm. Let's enjoy it while we have it because right. it can all change at any moment. It's 917 and 66 degrees. And still to come on GMSA, tradition that's over 100 years old kicked off in Colorado. How the cows on parade 
on a parade route made their big entrance this week. And after the break, one of the hottest spots on the globe is heating up again. We're headed to Hawaii for a new eruption. New this morning, Mount Kilauea is awake again out in Hawaii. That's right, the volcano started erupting on Thursday after a month-long pause in activity, and residents and tourists can once again see gushes of lava shooting into the air. Authorities say some burst rose as high as 160 feet, but on average, the lava fountain is about 32 feet high. So the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory says Kilauea's activity is not a threat to any communities on the Big Island. And back on the mainland, Wisconsin has a new multi-millionaire. A $15.1 million lottery ticket was sold in town of Luck on Wednesday. It's the biggest lottery win in Luck's history. And in the town of 1,100 people, no one knows who the lucky resident is. However, this village hopes their luck is just getting started. I want to win the lottery so bad. You're going to have to move to luck. <laughs> to move to luck. For some good luck. There you go. <laughs> All right, folks, time is 921. Temperature is 67 degrees. Up next on GMSA, we've reported on some crazy things going through airport security, but this one is slithering its way into the headlines. This morning, we're talking snakes on a plane but not in Florida because of some diligent TSA agents. That's right, on Friday, the agency tweeted out a photo showing an x-ray of passengers carry on bag at Tampa International Airport. So check out the top side of your screen to your right. Take a quick, a close look, you can't miss it. TSA says that's a four foot boa constrictor coiled up inside of the luggage. And in case you're wondering, the airline that was, uh, the airline, the woman said that that was ticketed to fly on does not permit such cold-blooded passengers. The airline was notified of the captured stowaway. And in case you're wondering, a boa constrictors are non-venomous snakes. Wait, I wonder if the snake got on, was on there on accident or was like packed? I don't know, that's a good question, but I mean. Still no thanks. Unless it snuck in while they were packing. No. Well. Pet snakes. All right, over in Colorado, it's the first time since the pandemic began. Cows on parade in downtown Denver. The National Western Stock Show held its traditional kickoff parade in the Mile High City. Crowds were treated to herds of longhorn cattle, horses, and even wagons. The Western Stock Show runs more than two weeks and features rodeo performances, horse shows, all kinds of livestock shopping, and even a cowboy bar. A cowboy bar. I don't know what a cowboy bar is. I feel so not Texan saying that. <laughs> well, regardless, cowboy bar, it's dry January, so it doesn't apply to us. No, no. <laughs> no it, more folks. with this dry January. <laughs> All right, folks, it's 926, 67 degrees outside. We're still ahead at 930. NFL teams and fans are preparing to show up and show out this weekend as they honor Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin while he recovers from that scary injury. Plus, are you working on focusing on your heart health this year? We've got five ways to get started as we move into the new year. Good morning, San Antonio. It's 9.30 on this beautiful Saturday morning, January 7th, and I'm joined by Sarah Costa. Hi, good morning. <laughs> good morning, Sarah. Well, the weather's been holding up. It's been a little bit foggy outside, so I know we're all kind of like spraying down our hairspray to keep the, the hair together. It was it was a struggle this morning, Mia, even inside our studios. And it, it's definitely gonna be a hairspray in a ponytail kind of day. Yep, the whole the whole works when it comes to the humidity because it is back and it is with us in full force throughout this Saturday. But the good news is tomorrow we're actually going to see some drier air move in behind our next cool front that arrives tonight. Now before we can get there though, yes, it is just a sticky start out there this morning. You can definitely feel that moisture outside. Temperatures are currently in the 60s here across the majority of the area 
area. It's 66 over at San Antonio International, just shy of 70 though on the south side of Bear County at Stinson, 68 at Kelly and 66 over at Randolph. Now, yesterday morning we did manage to find a few pockets of fog out there this morning, a little bit more dense in spots, and that is thanks to that Gulf moisture that has quickly returned. The change in dew points right now compared to where we were this time yesterday, about 5 to 15 degrees higher, which yes, that just means that the humidity is here and you can feel it when you step out for any of those early Saturday morning plans. Because of that also, yes, we do have some dense pockets of fog out there, reducing visibility a bit, especially on some highly traveled roadways. I-35, New Braunfels stretching up to San Marcos, Bernie Stage area off I-10, stretching up to Kerrville. That's where some of that dense fog has currently settled in. So if you are planning on hitting the roadways, maybe give yourself a little bit of extra time and just be careful out there. We also have found some pockets of drizzle and that could continue over the next couple of hours, but really that drizzle is going to transition to just a few light spotty showers out there this afternoon. It's not going to be for everybody, but that is all ahead of a slightly better chance for some rain and storms tonight with that cool front. We'll time it all out coming up in just a few y'all. Thank you, Mia. Well, right now we're tracking some road closures that started over nine will continue throughout the weekend. This is near Gold Canyon and Loop 1604 in the city's north side. So crews began closing roads around nine o'clock last night to start on some bridge repairs in that area. TxDOT says they've closed Loop 1604 at Gold Canyon in both directions overnight. Ramps connecting 281 and Loop 1604 East will also be closed. So those closures are expected to last until 5 o'clock in the morning on Monday. And there's also another road project getting attention from San Antonio City Council. People are frustrated, fed up, and fighting for road work to finish along the St. Mary Strip. City Councilman Mario Bravo acknowledged concerns that construction was cutting into profits for businesses in the area. He says with the help of Mayor Ron Nirenberg, local businesses could get $2.2 million. Now the St. Mary Strip project was supposed to be finished in late 2022. Now they're hoping to have the road finished by March, followed by sidewalks, landscaping and lighting this summer. Project contractor Spoglass and Public Works officials say delays are due to weather, unforeseen challenges with utilities and soil. You guys to get it together. I want you to act like you have some professional pride in doing your job. The next deadline is one week out. Road work along St. Mary's between East Woodlawn and Valdez Place is scheduled up to wrap up by Friday, January 13th. A 19-year-old girl is in the hospital this morning after telling Pol San Antonio police she was shot at a bar on the city's west side. Police say the teen arrived at the hospital with a gunshot wound to her leg. She says she was shot at a bar and the suspect drove off soon after. Police found shell casings at the scene, but no signs of blood. The investigation continues, but the story so far is posted on KSAT.com. And new this morning after the holidays, many American adults consider cutting back on alcohol for dry January. We covered it a little earlier on GMSA at 630 and now Alyssa Cole, she joins us with the potential health benefits of skipping a drink. Good morning, Alyssa. Yes, good morning, Jonathan and Sarah. Let me all fill you in just in case you don't know. January is a popular 31 day commitment for losing weight, detoxing or just simply improving health habits. Now studies show a month long fast from alcohol can improve sleep, reduce cholesterol, lower blood pressure, aid in weight loss, and it can reduce liver fat by a whopping 40%. Now data from AARP show 74% of American adults who committed to a dry January succeeded in their goal and maintained sobriety after January. So where do you start? If you're thinking about giving up alcohol, first write down your goals and post it somewhere you see every day. You might want to enlist a buddy to join your efforts. And next, get rid of all the alcohol in your house so there's no temptation. And find alternatives to alcohol. Mocktails are a popular choice, especially if you're in a social setting or a bar. Now remember, don't give up if you have a slip up. Just keep doing your best. Researchers suggest teaming up with a friend or group to keep accountability and avoid situations where you might be tempted to drink. Jonathan, Sarah. 
Thank you, Alyssa. Excellent information. But now to a top story we've been following all morning, the remarkable progress of Buffalo Bills safety Damar Hamlin, who is making a progress after a scary injury on Monday night football. We're also hearing from his team and how they plan to honor him during Sunday's game. Here's ABC's Mona Kozar Abdi with more. This morning, a remarkable update on Damar Hamlin's road to recovery. The Buffalo Bills safety breathing on his own and surprising his teammates by making a virtual appearance at the Bills meeting on Friday, saying, quote, love you boys. To see that boy's face, to uh, see him smile, see him go like this in the camera, it was everything. The players applauding Hamlin with a standing ovation as he spoke to them from the hospital. He did this to the guys, you know, right away. He flexed on them, I guess. He made the heart symbol probably more than anything. And then he gave him a thumbs up. Doctors removing Hamlin's breathing tube, taking him off a ventilator, a critical step in his recovery from that terrifying collapse during Monday night football. To midfield. Hamlin going into cardiac arrest after a tackle. For minutes, medics frantically administering CPR to the 24-year-old. They are intensely working on DeMar Hamlin. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell praising the first responders for their quick action that night. The medical personnel on the field who flawlessly executed an emergency action plan that likely saved DeMar's life. The league deciding the game between Buffalo and Cincinnati won't be completed, announcing plans to address the potential impact it could have on a postseason schedule. In the meantime, teams from around the league will pay tribute to Hamlin by wearing special Love for DeMar shirts during warm-ups and painting the number three on the 30-yard line in Bill's blue and red. That was Mona Kosar Abdi reporting the Buffalo Bills aren't the only team honoring Hamlin this weekend. All 16 teams with games over the weekend will have the option to wear this t-shirt during warm-ups. It displays Hamlin's jersey number. There will also be a moment of support at all games before the national anthem where fans will be asked to cheer for Hamlin and his caregivers. Now, the Monday night Buffalo Bills and Cincinnati Bengals game where Hamlin collapsed due to cardiac arrest will not be made up. Both teams have already have slots in the playoffs. DeMar Hamlin also has the most sought after jersey on Fanatics. The sports merchandise memorabilia company says the 24 year old's jersey is the most purchased jersey among all athletes across all sports on its website. Support has been pouring in for Hamlin, including millions of dollars pouring in for his toy drive on GoFundMe. And to another top story, you still have a chance to become a multi-millionaire. The Mega Millions jackpot is expected to jump past a billion dollars after no one matched all six numbers so far after Friday night's drawing. So in case you win next week, we've got some suggestions on what to do. First, don't post anything on social media. Privacy is going to be your bet and only tell closest loved ones. Second, Assemble a good team to help you with your next steps. That should include an attorney, an accountant, and a financial professional, and potentially even a charitable, charitable planning professional or media expert. And third, decide whether to take the lump sum or the annuity payment, but experts say take the lump sum. You have a lot of control over what you can do with the earnings. You're going to get that lump sum. You're going to be able to invest it the way you want. You also have the ability to spend it in the way that you deem fit. And finally, decide what your financial goals are for all of that money. Your odds of winning any Mega Millions prize is one in 24, but your chances of winning the jackpot are one in 302.6 million. So good luck. Good luck. Okay, right now on KSAT.com, the new year brings in a new effort to help the San Antonio Food Bank Workforce Solutions Alamo is accepting donations at all 16 of its career centers through the end of the month. So if you want to help, you can check out all those details right now on KSAT.com. It's 940 and 67 degrees outside. Still ahead on GMSA, we're going to Fredericksburg where David Elder shows us some hill country nacho, nachos. That's today on Texas Eats. Yes, and up next, are you working on focusing on your heart, heart health? Uh, if you are, we've got five ways to get started and uh, move into a healthy new year. Trying, I'm really <laughs> trying, Jonathan. <laughs> 60, that makes two of us. I mean, this weather doesn't really make you want to go outside and be healthy. 67 really. degrees, 941, it's muggy, foggy out there. Mia has a forecast when we come back.
This morning, heart disease is the leading cause of death in the U.S., killing one person every 34 seconds. Mm, the good news is some simple lifestyle changes can help you build a strong heart. Nancy Alvarez tells us five New Year's resolutions that can help boost your heart health. This new year, why not make heart health a priority? Here are five easy ways to start. First, follow the 80-20 rule. So try to pick 80% of your foods to be whole foods. Whole foods have not been processed, refined, or had ingredients added to them. This includes fruits, veggies, nuts, whole grains, meat, fish, and eggs. Another heart-healthy resolution to consider, incorporate 30 minutes of exercise into your routine every day. Even if it means that you're walking 30 minutes a day and it's split into 10, 10, and 10. One recent Harvard review found that walking for just two and a half hours a week cut the risk of heart disease by 30%. Also, resolve to get more sleep this new year. In one study, people sleeping less than six hours a night had a 20% higher risk of a heart attack. Another resolution to consider, aim to reduce stress levels. Meditation can help, and Dr. Shaw also recommends keeping a gratitude journal. Write down three things you're grateful for each morning. It releases the happy hormones, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, all these things that help our arteries, help our blood pressure, help our heart rate, let us live longer. Our last resolution, nix bad habits like smoking and drinking. If you do have a drink, limit alcohol to no more than six to eight ounces a day, but cut cigarettes altogether. Research shows smoking causes about one out of every four deaths from heart disease. With resolutions to boost your heart health, I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. I want to keep a gratitude journal. That's I really like cool, the sound of that. That's yeah. a cool idea. This was excellent advice, by the way. Yeah. Okay, we still haven't started our new year yet. So next what? week we're going to have a <laughs> gratitude <laughs> journal. Well, you're going to do dry January. I'm not going to do that. Uh, you know, we're going to sign up for exercise classes. That's right. We're we'll going to get it together. We're going yeah. to drink water, Ooh. like, you know, stay hydrated. Yes. We're a week Spiders. late, but we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Just, a little <laughs> Just like the weather. It really hasn't gotten its act together yeah. yet. Yeah, <laughs> not really very seasonal, I no. guess you could say. Like the past several days have just been warmer than average. That trend kind of continues over the next several days heading into this week. Today, it's humid, but at least tomorrow we'll start to see some of that drier air move back in, helping it feel a bit more comfortable outside. But we'll start off with a look at temperatures here as we approach the 10 a.m. hour this Saturday. Yes, warmer than average for those morning lows. Our average low for this time of year is in the 40s. We woke up to the 60s this morning, so still 66 officially here in San Antonio. The same up in New Braunfels, just shy of 70 in Gonzales. 71, though, in Pleasanton over in Atascosa County. 67 in Hondo. It's 61 in Rock Springs. That's also where some of that thicker fog has settled into portions of the hill country. The drizzle hasn't been for everybody today, but you can see here on radar, especially across our southeastern counties near Cuero, stretching up to Hallettsville out there in Lavaca County, even near Gonzales. Gonzales and Gonzales County, we do have just a few streamer showers that are pushing their way farther up to the north northeast here in the northern portions of Bear County and then just north of San Antonio. We also have found a few sprinkles out there that activity still moving north, all thanks to the humidity that has really returned over the past 24 hours. It's also why we have some fog out there this morning, especially across portions of I 10 and I 35 north of San Antonio. That's where some of those visibilities are still a little bit reduced, so be careful careful if you are stepping out there on the roadways here today, at least over the next couple of hours before that tries to break up and lift on out of here. We will still keep the potential to find a few light spotty showers heading into the afternoon. We've got the cloud cover in place right now, but I think if we can find that break up just a little bit and lead way to a few peaks of sunshine, highs could head for the low to even mid 70s. I slightly brought up our daytime highs to about 74 75 here in town. It's going to be dependent on the cloud cover, but the theme is another warmer than average day and a humid day. And then we'll see those temperatures fall through the low 70s by dinner time and into the upper 60s later tonight. Again, highs low to mid 70s across the majority of the area, maybe a little bit warmer the farther south you go, especially if we can find 
some of that cloud cover to scatter out just a bit. That all ahead of a slightly better chance for some scattered rain and thunderstorms this evening, and even more so tonight as we see our next cool front move through south central Texas. We are stuck in the muggy mid 60s right now here in town, but on the other side of the Lone Star State, 37 in Lubbock, 28 in Amarillo up in the Panhandle, and then take a look even farther up to the north. It's three degrees in Bismarck, North Dakota, right? Right now 18 in Omaha, Nebraska and 21 in Casper, Wyoming. We are not expecting temperatures that cold here in South Central Texas, but with lower humidity that filters in tomorrow, at least it's going to feel a little bit better out there. So again, this afternoon, a couple of light spotty showers possible, not for everybody. And then just after dinner time, especially for areas along and east of I-35, scattered showers and a couple of thunderstorms certainly possible a few of which could sit on the stronger side, especially across our southeastern counties. It's the exception rather than the rule, but we'll monitor for maybe a stronger storm before the sun comes up tomorrow. And then we clear things on out of here. Lows tomorrow headed for the low 50s, maybe a few 40s west of San Antonio. Highs in the upper 60s, so not too bad with that lower humidity. So that's why tomorrow, while still technically, yes, warmer than average, is still going to feel pretty nice in town. Drink your water. Drink your water. Stay hydrated. Absolutely. Hydration is key. That's it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, folks, time 50, 67 degrees. All right, after the break, we're just over a month away from Mardi Gras, but the party has already started. How it could ruin your New Year's diet. More of that. That's <laughs> after this. And taking a look outside, those roadways are looking nice and quiet, smooth sailing for the most part. That's at Pat Book. At Pat 1604 at Pat Booker. So if you're making plans to head out, now would be a good time. Make sure to drive safely. Well, this morning, carnival season is here, and that means king cake seasons. So Paul's Pastry Shop in Mississippi says by the time we get to Mardi Gras, they'll go through 55,000 pounds of fillings, 88,000 pounds of flour, and 18,000 pounds of cream cheese. We're told the regular season gets cranked up next week when they'll be going 24 hours a day, cranking out all these king cakes for the carnival season. And what does it mean if you find the baby in the king cake? I'm not sure. I just oh, know. you have to buy the cake the next year. That's what our Louisiana priest. If, yeah, it, you have to, in my family we do. If you get the baby, you have to buy tamales in February, I believe. Oh, so different yeah. takes on the. Yeah, different takes. Every family, I think, has their I never get approach. the baby. <laughs> okay, and if you if that doesn't make you hungry, how about a trip to Fredericksburg? David Elder is taking us there for some hill country nachos on Texas Eats. This is our carnitas nachos, and so pulled pork, um, three different kinds of cheeses, some fresh guacamole on top, pickled Fresno peppers, uh, corn chips that we fry here in house, everything done in house, and, and some of our hatch chili salsa right there on the side as well. I'm gonna get some action on here. I'm gonna put a little bit of everything. Yeah, That's cheers it. to you. Absolutely, cheers. The carnitas buddy. nachos. Here we go. Mm. Oh my goodness, it's the real deal. Why? Why do we torture ourselves like this on this show? Just showing uh, all the good food. It looks so good, Sarah. Do you, how do you take? How do you like your nachos? Okay, I like them. Just like each chip has to have the right amount of like bean oh, spread so on an it. Art to your nachos. Yes, here. like you don't just throw it on the chips because then it's the ratio is off. I want each chip to have beans and cheese and like a dollop of like sour cream and guacamole. I'm, I'm not She's easy. Perfected the art of the nachos. <laughs> well, it's I good. Did you Food segment. Right? <laughs> All right, folks, the time is 9.56, so we'll be right back. All right, expect the humidity to stick with us throughout the day. Today, temperatures climbing to about 70 officially here in town by lunchtime. Some pockets of fog over the next couple of hours breaking up a bit into the afternoon, leading to a few more peaks of sunshine, highs in the low to mid 70s. And then later this evening, we are expecting that next cool front to approach south central Texas. Slightly better chance of some scattered rain and a couple of thunderstorms takes us into the overnight hours and pre-dawn hours of our Sunday. Then that lower humidity arrives, temperatures in the upper 
60s transitioning to the 70s as we get a little bit closer to Tuesday and Wednesday with a bit more sunshine as well. All right, we're going to have drier weather next couple days. Are you are you really going to do dry January? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fully committed. But you haven't started yet. It's already January. No, but I, but I haven't had a drink, so. Oh, oh. so you have started. Yes, I've officially I am going to keep you started. accountable. We can do this, San Antonio. We got it. I'm not doing it. Have a good day.